Hi, I'm Neha Batra, and I'm an engineering director here at GitHub. And I'm so excited to introduce you to this new segment that we're doing, where we're going to be speaking with two open source maintainers, Paulus and Sage, and we're going to be seeing what the world looks like from their seat. And so they'll be sharing their screen, and they'll be doing a bit of a show and tell, and so you can see what it looks like to be an open source maintainer. So why don't the two of you introduce yourselves? Yeah, awesome. Uh, so I'm Paulus Schouts. I'm the founder of Home Assistant. Home Assistant is an eight-year-old open source home automation platform that you can run at your home with a focus on local control and privacy. So basically, you can install it on a Raspberry Pi and then take control of your home. Hi, my name is Shegmo Adebayo. I'm the author of Chakra UI. Chakra UI is a React component library that gives you all the building blocks you need to build an accessible website or application with ease. I'm really curious as a core maintainer, what do you take in to figure out what your top priorities are for the day? So what we do in uh, Home Assistant is that we have a notion of code owners. And so with code owners, it means that we certain parts of the application and we actually check file paths for that. We say, oh, this part is code owned by this group or and those people are automatically mentioned in a pull request or in an issue. So that means that Whenever something in the core is touched or something, then it will automatically say, hey, home assistant slash core as a team will be mentioned, or it can happen that like individual people are mentioned. Um, and so for example, if you look at my screen here, you see like there's a team mentioned, there's a personal mention, there's stuff I commented on. So, so and then, yeah, I just go through it and I just kind of, you know, sometimes like generally when things are merged and like, for example, here, I see that like Martin has looked at it while well, he's a core developer. He's really good at reviewing. So, you know, I could just click it and I keyboard shortcut, boom, it's gone. This is incredibly helpful. It helps me understand how you prioritize your time. Once you get your focus time in the morning, you kind of get, you look into GitHub notifications to see where your attention might be. Sage, I'd love to see um, what it looks like when you start your day. I just want to be able to focus on the work itself. The community starts to drive you in interesting directions. I have a very active team of, of maintainers that are all there to support the community. I'm usually not active most of the time in the community because I do lots of the maintaining work and the code itself. Uh, but then I have people, I have close to three different people assigned to just help the people in the community and just, get, just give me some feedback or give me like a quick summary of what's going on. I tend to check pull requests first before going into issues because, I mean, pull requests are basically solutions to existing problems. Issues basically is more problems. So uh, you just, I don't want to spend my time looking at more problems. I just come here to see like what, um, what, what are people trying to solve or fix themselves and how can I help them get to the finish line if they have questions. Okay, so that brings me to the next question that I wanted to ask you. How do you use discussions to get the best out of your community? One of them basically is to know, sort of track who is using the library, like who is using Chakra UI. Uh, just come there and sort of like put the project, your company, and a link to the website so we can at least have something to brag about or um, also put it on our showcase page on the website. And then the second useful one for me um, is one of our core um, community maintainers uh, basically just helps us like compile all of the frequently asked questions in there. Well, one of the benefits of a forum like GitHub Discussions is that it can actually, people can search for it, right? Like anything that you put on Discord, it's just like a black box it's gone and like a lot of knowledge is actually getting lost because people are helping one another and people are not writing it up or writing it out in a way that other people can process it so i have my last question with you all and that is what are you looking to solve to take your community to the next stage uh, so right now one of the things we've been spending a lot of our time i've been thinking about is um, how do we build or design accessible ui components in a way that is not tied to a framework Basically, we've been trying to make Home Assistant easier to use ever since we got like people working on it full time, because that's when we really were like, okay, we want to, instead of our technological audience of like system administrators, people that can run Python applications and write YAML configuration files, we want to get from that group to home automation enthusiasts and people that want to make the best out of their home. Yeah, well... Thank you so much. I feel like I learned so much from the two of you. I hopefully you two learned from each other as well. Um, what I really wanted to do is 
kind of really see what the world looked like from your seats and eventually show our audience what it might look like from a maintainer's perspective, what you pick up on, how you try to solve problems within your community, what the fact that like, not one person can do it by themselves. And the fact that you rely on a huge community to work together. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your screen, which is sometimes kind of scary. I hope you have a fantastic day.